Hello, and welcome to Inaware's Process Runner help series. In this video, we will cover the looping functionality of Process Runner. In this Excel workbook, we have various layouts of sales orders with multiple line items that we want to create in SAP. Let's create an automation script for these layouts using the VA01 transaction code using looping to account for the multiple line items. Let's start by opening Process Runner Enterprise and selecting the transaction technology. We are going to enter the transaction code VA01 and log into any SAP system across our SAP landscape with the username and a password. Let's pull up our Excel data in the background and enter the first row of data. Let's enter an order type of OR, sales organization of 1000, distribution channel of 12, and a division of 00. On the next screen, let's enter a sold to party of 2200 and a PO number and press enter. Pressing enter will separate the header data from the line item data in the script. We will explain the importance of this when we get to the mapper tab of Process Runner. Now that we have recorded our header data, let's record the line item data. As we have multiple line items, we are going to have to implement a loop. SAP usually pushes line item rows up as additional line item data is entered. Therefore, it is best practice to enter our data in the second row as the data will be pushed to the first row, leaving the second row open for additional data. Let's enter the material number of M-05 and an order quantity of 2 in the second row and hit enter. As we can see, the data is pushed up, leaving the second line open for more data, which allows us to loop this process later in Process Runner. Now let's save the script. We will now be taken into the mapper ribbon of Process Runner. Our data is located in an external Excel file which we can link by selecting Use External Excel File. Let's navigate to our external Excel file and attach it. Let's begin with the first sheet called Data1. Now let's make sure our data is mapped correctly. The document type is coming from column A, sales organization coming from column B, distribution channel coming from column C, division coming from column D, PO number coming from column E and sold to party is coming from column F, which is all correct. We have the overview screen mapped again between the sold to party and the material number, which was created when we pressed enter during the recording process. This is important as it will allow us to implement a loop for the line items. With Process Runner, loops are always implemented at the screen level. We will start the loop at the screen right before the material number field as that is where the line items begin. An end loop will automatically be added just before the last save screen. So in this case, we will be looping the multiple material numbers and order quantities. Now we need to set a block type and a block value for this loop. We have various block types to choose from. Fix block will loop the script after a set fix block value and is used when we know the number of line items are always fixed. On change will loop the script when we have a change in a specific column. Once it finds a change, it's going to reinitiate the loop. OnChangeIgnoreBlank is very similar to OnChange, but it will ignore any blanks as a blank counts as a change. OnBlankCellInColumn will loop the script when a blank cell is encountered in a specified column. OnValueIgnoreBlank will loop the script when the script encounters any value in a specified column while ignoring any blanks. The legacy loop will loop the script based on user-defined values for header and line items in a specified column. Furthermore, depending on the Excel layout, we can select the block type at the field level. Header value is used in some rare cases when a field inside the loop should always take the value from the first row or the header row. Line item only can be used in layouts when the line items don't start on the same row as the header information and usually start in the row right below the header information. Header plus line item is used when the line item data starts on the same row as the header data. We will be using header plus line item for these examples. For this first example, we can set the block type to on blank cell and column and the block value to column G as we have a blank cell after the last line item for the material numbers. So for this layout, every time a blank cell is encountered in column G, the loop will reinitiate, creating a new sales order. At this point, we are finished mapping the script and we can go into the home tab of Process Runner to set a start row and an end row. 
Let's set the start row to 2 as that is where our data starts and the end row to 1000 as Process Runner automatically stops processing after 5 blank rows. Now let's click the Run button to run this file. It will ask us to save the file anywhere on our drive before we can run this script. Let's just save it to our desktop. We are now prompted to log into SAP. In Excel, we can see the SAP messaging which tells us the sales orders were successfully uploaded to SAP. Now we can verify in SAP that the sales orders with multiple line items were uploaded by running the VA03T code. Let's enter the sales order 8208 to confirm all of the line items were successfully uploaded. As we can see, the loop successfully uploaded all of the line items for the sales order. Now, let's navigate to the next data set in the Mapper tab. Based on the layout, we can use the block type on change with the block value set to column E. The PO number only changes when a new sales order needs to be created, and so the loop will initiate any time the PO number is changed. Let's now run this file and verify the loop worked correctly in SAP. Let's take a look at sales order 8213. As we can see, the loop successfully uploaded all of the line items for this sales order. Next, let's take a look at the third data set. Similar to the last example, the PO number only changes when a new sales order needs to be created, but the identical PO numbers are not repeated in this case. Therefore, we can use onChangeIgnoreBlank as the block type with the block value set to column E. This block type will ignore the blanks in column E as a blank counts as a change. Another option we have is to set the block type to on value ignore blank with the block value set to column A. This block type works with this layout as well as a new loop will be initiated anytime a value is encountered in column A. Let's stick with this block type and run this script. Let's pull up sales order 8217 in SAP, and we can see that all of the line items were successfully uploaded. Let's move on to the fourth data set. In this case, column I is populated with a value of H or an L to define whether the data on each row is header data or line item data to implement a legacy loop. Column I is not mapped to any field in SAP and is simply used for the legacy loop. Let's select legacy loop as the block type. The block value will automatically populate with three values. The first is the column process runner will analyze. The second is the value that defines the header data and the third is the value that defines the line item data. Let's change the block value to i, h, and l, i being the column we want to analyze, h being the value that defines the header data, and l being the value that defines the line item data. The loop will reinitiate any time the value of h is encountered in column i. Now let's run the script. Let's pull up sales order 8221 in SAP, and we can see that all of the line items were successfully uploaded. Lastly, let's move on to the data set 5. In this layout, we can see that each sales order has three line items.
Therefore, we can use the block type of fixed value and set the block value to 3. This will reinitiate the loop every 3 rows. Let's now run the script. Let's pull up sales order 8224 in SAP, and we can see that all three line items were successfully uploaded. This was a tutorial on the basic concepts of looping, and more advanced concepts will be covered in a different video. Want to learn more about simplifying SAP with Inawara technologies? Visit us at Inawara.com. Thank you for watching.